Hey y'all, it's Dave. I wanted to uh, do a video for my channel on uh, music stuff, and so I know I, I focus really on, on two areas. I love Jesus, I like music, and uh, I love the Bible. And so you might follow me for one of those or all of those or something, but uh, I want to give kind of a tip that I've found and use a lot, pretty much nonstop for my acoustic playing because I play solo so much, like hours and hours of just solo time of me and the acoustic. And a few years ago, I started playing with pad tracks. And so there's different uh, people that have come out with tracks that's like a 20 minute or something, a 10 minute just pad in a certain key that keeps repeating on the root. And so by pad, I just mean that thing that just sits there behind your playing to kind of fill out the empty space of just you playing by yourself um after a while that just you know it's so repetitive and i was looking for something a little bit more dynamic and so there are effects that i use on my acoustic guitar mainly reverb a little bit of delay and uh, even a compressor on my acoustic i know there's mixed uh, feelings about compressors on acoustics but i'll I'll explain why I use one when I turn the camera around. Um, but this video is really all going to be on how to create dynamic pad textures behind your playing. And so let me turn this around, um, show you some of the pedals I'm using, and then I'll just play to kind of demo some of the stuff. I'm not getting into specific pedal setup, just some general sounds to help you out and help you look for effects to undergird your uh, solo playing. I use it with the band, but it's a little bit more uh, settle. If we have a keyboard player, there's really no need for this. Again, this is just for like sitting down doing solo stuff. And so I'm going to turn this around and uh, get started. All right. Hey, everyone. Say hello to my foot. Uh, this is my board. I, if you've seen other videos, you're familiar with it. But uh, uh, what I haven't mentioned is this board is set up for my acoustic and my electric. Um, if I'm playing only electric, I might switch out this slow engine for a uh, uh, booster, but that's really the only thing that changes. This is built around playing both. Again, so I do solo acts a lot, and a lot of times they go for uh, an hour, two hours, and it's all just spontaneous stuff. So that's one of the reasons I use a looper to um, just kind of break the monotony of the singing, give me some freedom to think. Um, but if I don't want to create a long loop, like the reverb and the pad effects really, really help a whole lot. And so I use this compressor because I don't have long fingernails and so when I transition from strumming to finger picking I always lose just a ton of volume and so I like this compressor because it sounds great on electric and I'll, I'll turn it up and get more squash out of it but for acoustic I've just barely you can see there barely have the blend up the attacks down a little bit and um, that's how I have it set for my acoustic but just for the sake of the video I'm gonna keep it off because uh, compressors are loud um, also I'll mention I'm going direct in um, whether I play electric or acoustic I always go direct in I really don't need an amp head for my electric because the Strymon pedal has a uh, cap filter on the back of it behind this uh, little cable there and so uh, as long as it's off for acoustic you're good and I'll turn it on for electric and it gives a wonderful sounding just warm EQ curve on my electric and so I'm usually always going direct stereo in anyway I want to just explain some of these and then uh, I'll get into it and show you how I use different different things um, this is one of the ones that I started with it's a new neighbor seraphim I like this one because you can go in and out of the wet reverb with the shimmer so it gives you a really really cool dynamic i'll just play that uh, independent uh, real quick there's just kind of my clean sound and i'm going to do mostly strumming so you can see how the reverb actually doesn't get out of control i will say the right reverb pedal will go a long way if you try to do this on uh, other styles of reverb it's not going to work out for you very well you'll get that annoying oscillating sound but new neighbor and strymon do a fantastic job at following the acoustic So that might be good for like a verse or something. 
but if you're going into a chorus and you want to build dynamics, if you hold this switch down, let it go till it starts starts uh, blinking, it'll give you a uh, shimmer. absolutely love that effect. Now when you play all the time for hours and hours and hours, one pad sound is, uh, you know, can, can get a little bit boring. Even though it's cool, it's dynamic, it follows you, it's not a track that's so monotone underneath. Um, what I use too is I'll leave this on and I've got presets on here. Um, I'm not going to get too much into the presets, but I'll say I'm using the cloud and the choral machine on both of these. There's one that's a ooh or an o, oh, and then this one's a ah. And so even just the different uh, choral effects that it has on the choral reverb on this pedal are, uh, are primo. And I'll leave this on so that it still has some reverb signal to grab a hold of and, hold of and make these bigger. Um, so the key is probably about a uh, halfway mix, and you have to really keep an eye or an ear out for the decay rate. And so this cable here is going to this expression up. Uh, so I programmed it, when I turn it on, um, I can control with my foot the decay rate. Um, so if you're going to be just pooting around and playing little... Uh, um, just picking around, letting stuff sit. You might keep the decay rate up. Right now it's on 26, but if you're going to start strumming and digging in, you really want to uh, take that decay rate down a little bit more because otherwise it's just going to get so big and out of control. And so uh, I keep my mixes on all the reverbs about 50%, sometimes under a little bit depending on the type of reverb, and then uh, just keep an eye on the decay rate. So all these are set up so that I can just hit the different presets while I'm strumming, and if I'm going to bring it down and sit there for a little bit, I'll bring the decay rate up so that I can do what you just heard. And so I'm going to go just quickly through all these presets so you can hear the different changes and uh, what how it helps with the dynamics of the different parts of the song that you're playing.
there you can see how I switch different presets. Again, I'm not going to get into how I program uh, this thing. Smaller ones like this that just have a, a mix, uh, the shimmer setting and the uh, decay setting are real easy to control. Um, I will say I don't have my pedals set to like, don't touch them. Um, I'm always, that's why I play barefoot or just with socks on so I can always just turn stuff um, with my feet because I don't have a set setting really on any one pedal that I play with. Um, and so I'm always turning dials for the sound I want. Honestly, um, when I switch to this one with the Oz, that was a little bit too strong I heard in the recording with the headphones so I'd probably back the mix or the decay down just a little bit on that one. Um, also another fun effect that I like is in just playing with the delay and so I had to turn the click off. The click was going in my ear and I was having to ignore that. That was annoying. But um, anyways, sometimes when I'm just sitting and like my mind needs a break from trying to dig in or sing or something, um, um, I like the reverse delay sound. And this delay is after my reverb. Um, I have a delay before it. There's minor sound differences and I use them both um, for different settings, but uh, that's one of the, the ways I, I use delay. Um, so, I'll just do something where I'm just noodling around and it gives a really cool um, effect when you're just sitting there. When you start digging in, um, the pick attack sounds really annoying, um, especially on uh, tailors because they're a little bit more tinny. Uh, but the pick attack does sound annoying when you start digging in and you've got the reverse delay turned way, way up. Um, another thing that I use, um, even for rhythm, it works out really, really cool, is just a... Uh, uh, tape echo behind me so if I'm feeling like a little more folky I'll just Just a, uh, another example of how I use the delay with the reverb. I like the two interacting together. Um, if you're going to put delay either before or after your reverb, it's going to make your reverb signal sound bigger. So just be aware of that. You might need to uh, adjust your uh, delay tail a little bit to calm it down, or uh, not the delay tail, the reverb tail a little bit to call it calm it down some from the delay. Um, I do enjoy using the Dark Star. There's great videos on that. It's a really rare, uh, really weird pedal, but it's uh, tons of fun to kind of just change up some of the sounds. Um, my favorite one to play with, I'm getting the settings right here. My favorite uh, setting to play with is the delayed reverb. And it almost has a similar effect as the freeze, but a little bit more... Uh, uh, fluid than just using the freeze. Um, it does change your guitar tone a little bit, I've uh, noticed, especially on acoustics. And so it's not something that I want to cut in and out of the middle of a piece, just again because of the tone change. <laughs> So it's just kind of a nice underneath. Um, they've got some really wild effects on this one too. This is gonna sound goofy because the pitch it and set, but you've got an octave up and down 
on both these top knobs, so this is gonna sound dumb, listen. But you can begin to manipulate those behind you. And then they have a bit cruncher on here too. This one does the octave on the left side. Um, and this one does the crunch rate. So, great little pedal for creating a little bit more tension. Um, also, something else that I will do is if I just need a uh, real quick break like if I'm gonna sit for a, a while I'll just build a loop and uh, let the room enjoy the loop for a little bit go take a bathroom break or something um, but if I just need a quick break to maybe get away from the mic sneeze or something or I'm just tired of playing and, and want to stop for a little bit um, this freeze set about there and I have it on latch you just hit that once and it will freeze whatever note you have in there and so sometimes I'll actually um, um, just let my root ring out hit the freeze uh, and now you can hear the freeze being uh, underneath my signal as it fades out and if you hit a root you can just treat it like a pad and play over it um, but it would be a part that would just, you know, drive you crazy if it just stayed on there forever. And so don't let that sit too long. So anyway, that's some of the thing, or those are some of the things that I use to uh, create a little bit more dynamic, atmospheric sound uh, behind me. You don't have to just turn it off like that. You can fade it down. But if you have reverb after it, like I did, then um, it'll kind of sound like it faded down because the reverb tail's decaying. But anyway, I hope that uh, that helps. That's kind of the portion of the setup that I use for my acoustic guitar. Everything else is kind of directed towards electric guitar or what I need for looping. Um, but uh, I love using effects on acoustic. I think it, it sounds uh, tremendous, especially if you're an acoustic player that always plays by yourself. There's uh, so many fun things that you can do to just kind of make the time more creative, uh, fill the atmosphere out a little bit more. Love it. So anyway, let me turn this around and say goodbye to everyone. Thanks for watching this video. Um, if you like my channel, I would ask you to come and visit my Patreon and that you would help support the channel. Um, on my Patreon, I focus more on the audio Bible. So I'm combining the music stuff with my love for scripture. And so the Patreons focus more of a behind the scenes of what's going on in the audio Bible as I progress. I'm almost done with the book of Acts right now. And so again, if you like the channel, uh, help support the audio Bible project and support this channel. I do have the Patreon available for those that would like to support because I am a full-time minister and I raise my own support in different ways and so this is just one of the small ways that um, I work on that and so anyway I hope this uh, video helped if you're an acoustic player and uh, are looking for some ways to enhance your sound. Y'all have a good day. Thanks. Bye.